Give up, priest. Why? God is on my side, tent maker. <laughs> you wear that Roman sword? It looks ridiculous. I'm a captain of the Temple Guard. You're a businessman. Why'd you pretend to be a warrior? Leave me alone. A child playing war games. You're not my priest, Sadducee. <laughs> Pharisee. The priest wins the match, but the tent maker wins the hearts of the crowd. Hey, Dina, go home and make my supper. The tent maker rubbed dirt in the face of the priest, and the crowd loved it. Hey, how'd you know I won? How'd you know I rubbed dirt in his face? I was watching. Watching? <laughs> Save me, Saul! Save me! Were you really watching? <laughs> he pushed your face in the dirt and you were almost naked. <laughs> God will punish you for this sin! When are you gonna marry that girl? Never. I don't love her. Yes, you do. When her father died, she was put in my care. I took her in. It doesn't mean I have to marry her. Of course not. Why would anyone marry a girl who is beautiful, smart, wild, and in love with you? Wild, yes. She questions my knowledge of the Torah. I'm a Sadducee priest. I've studied the Torah every day of my life. She doesn't question your knowledge of the Torah. She questions your slavery. You don't too. understand. You're an ignorant Pharisee. What I understand is that you want to be high priest of the temple. You're not sure marrying Dina is best for your ambition. There are not many men I would allow to talk to me in that way. There are not many men who know you as well as I do. Don't move, Hagar! Don't move! Don't move, Hagar! No! Stop! Hagar! Run! 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 That's most impressive. I apologize for all of my remarks. You, you're a hero to your people. Hey, Garth. Be oh, quiet, yes. Ruben. Forgive me. No. I wanted you to kill that man. He was going to kill you. Jesus teaches us to love our enemies. Jesus. <laughs> so, you saved the life of a Jesus madman. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is dead. Dead? For more than a month now. Get up. No. No, no this can't be true. It is true, my misguided friend. And if I were you, I'd keep quiet about your silly belief in that charlatan. Come on, Saul. Dead. No, it's not true. Jesus is not dead. Uh-huh. Crucified. My name is Barnabas. This is my wife, Hagar. We came to serve him. Ah, I'm Saul. Find another savior friend. Here. Here. It's all I have. I grow fruits and vegetables. Sell them in the market, please. Please, you saved our lives.
Pelgrim. Fear not, he is alive. <gasps> Tonight at sundown, I will come for you. Peace be with you, soul. Greetings, soul. I wouldn't argue with you. Gamaliel, the finest teacher in all of Judea. <laughs> so, my best student, <laughs> who has learned the art of flattery. <laughs> I don't remember your teaching me anything about flattery, Gamaliel. Solomon spoke of vanity. You have learned that lesson well. I am hungry, great Saul. If you have not eaten today, you will. As taught by the law of Moses, you have learned well. But what will I do when all the beggars have eaten and I have no more money? You will beg, and others who follow the law of the Torah will feed you. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you promised us saying, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, and to the ends of the earth. Please, we beg you, Jesus. Give us your Holy Spirit, because we can do nothing without you. Give us the power to carry your name to the ends of the earth. Peter. John, the time is now. I must know. Do we have the power? Or is his mission dead? Let the entire house of Israel know that God made him both Lord and Messiah. His name is Jesus. A false prophet! False prophet! He is dead! <laughs> he was crucified, but he lives. The Romans crucified him! We know that you acted in ignorance. You are the ignorant one! But now you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be forgiven. Save yourself! Go back to Nazareth! Jesus is the Messiah. Then why is he dead? Jesus is not dead. I saw him on the cross and he looked dead to me. <laughs> he came out of the tomb. He is alive. We saw him alive. You're both drunk. God raised Jesus, freeing him from death. No one defeats death. What should we do to receive the spirit of God? Ooh. I want to hear this. Repent and be baptized so your sins may be forgiven. God took my legs. What else does he want? <laughs> Look at us. I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do you want this? Stand up and walk. Israelites, why do you stare at us? Do you think we made him walk by our own power? Jesus has given him this in your presence. This is blasphemy. Jesus of Nazareth is dead, a false prophet. This is not a miracle. He walks. This man has been pretending to be lame all these years just so that he can beg for money. Tomorrow, he'll be at the gate once again, begging. This is hysteria. This is God's will. And now you blaspheme, too. You stand in the temple, God's house. You be careful what you say. Faith in Jesus' name made this man Arrest walk. this man! You know this man. You can see for yourself that Jesus has given him strength in his legs once again. Help me! Repent! I didn't save your life to see you die in prison. Be quiet. The Messiah! No. The Messiah! No. You must repent and turn to God so that his sins may be I am the high priest of the temple. What are your names? Simon, known as Peter. John, son of Zebedee from Capernaum. By what power or by what name did you commit this act? This man has been healed by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom God has raised from the dead. <sighs> if he is raised from the dead, where is he now? He ascended into heaven. He ascended into heaven. We saw him. While you watched. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven or given amongst mortals by which we must be saved. Can you read? Can you write? What is your profession? Fisherman. Fisherman. You are fisherman from Galilee? How dare you presume to tell this learned body of scholars what God intends? Does this man walk? Did he walk two days ago? Two years ago? Twenty years ago? Did you save him? Did you save him? No. Jesus did. See? <laughs> Take them outside. Outside! men have committed a blasphemy against God in the presence of many witnesses. And those same witnesses watched them heal a lame beggar. A man we have all seen sit by the temple gates for decades. You cannot deny it. We cannot allow them to teach this myth of Jesus of Nazareth. The man is dead. The myth is alive. Yes. A myth is like a fire. Confine it and it will die. If it spreads, it will grow. Bring them in. You will not speak of Jesus of Nazareth. You will not preach in his name. You will not heal in his name, ever. If you are found publicly speaking of this man, this dead man, you will be arrested, tried for blasphemy and treason. I speak as high priest of this God's temple. Whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. We will teach and heal in the name of the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. Then you will spend the rest of your life in prison. As God wills. Send them away! It is Stephen.
This is John, one of Jesus' close friends. John, this is Barnabas and his wife, Hagar. They're believers. Welcome. Please come in. Mary, I want you to meet two believers, Barnabas and his wife, Hagar. This is Jesus' mother, Mary. I'm your servant. Mother of Jesus. I'm just a person like you. Don't kneel to me. You're chosen by God. We all are chosen for a task by God. It is our job to find what he needs from us. Come and eat with us, and we will tell you all about Jesus. Jesus said, take, eat, for this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Barnabas, do you believe in the Lord Jesus, our Christ, our Messiah, and our Savior? With all my heart and soul. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's promise is to you who believe. Hagar, wife of Barnabas, do you believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our God? I do. I believe with all my heart. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Simon, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Known as Peter, you are under arrest by order of the High Priest of the Temple. Yesterday, 3,000 more were baptized in a matter of hours. We have a, a new heresy to deal with. Heresy? Are you sure? The leader was crucified by the Romans. So now the Romans decide what is heresy. This morning, the Romans issued a formal complaint. They fear a rebellion if these teachings persist. So you Pharisees must get control of these people. We Pharisees? Why blame us, Roman? Who teaches that the Messiah is coming? Pharisees! <laughs> And now they teach that the Messiah is risen from the dead. This Pharisee teaching, this fantasy of an afterlife. You restrain this sect of yours or Rome will make us suffer. Our teaching is clear. At the end of time, we shall all rise again. But the Torah does not teach that. The Torah is the law as given by God to Moses on Sinai. You speak the teachings of Sadducees. But to Pharisees, the Torah was given by God to every man. It is up to each man to decide how to interpret these words for himself. You delude the people with a promise of resurrection, and this is what you get! A risen Messiah! No. Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. If their beliefs are of human origin, they will fail. Remember Theodos. He had hundreds of followers, and yet they all disappeared when he died. Remember Judas, the Galilean? Many followers. But when he died, they all scattered. But if their teachings are of God... Of God? What, are you a blasphemer too? But if their teachings are of God, you will not be able to overthrow them because you'll be fighting against God himself. I counsel caution. Bring in the prisoners. The prisoners? Yes. The prisoners have escaped. They are teaching at the temple at this very moment. Our master Jesus said, in truth, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God... How did you escape may... from the prison? God's angel opened your doors for us. The liar! You bribed the guard and now he will die. 
Jesus wants his word to be known to Israel. He released us. We gave you strict orders not to preach in this man's name. We must obey God. Flog them. Forty lashes minus one. Rejoice, John, that you're worthy to suffer for our Lord. For our Lord! Martyrs are such fools. You priests let this happen time and again. When you can't control your own people, you come to me. King Herod is the ruler of us all. I'm not even a Jew. I hold this position at the pleasure of Rome, just as you do, High Priest. You come to me as your ruler when you need my help. Otherwise, you fight me on every front. Never. My king, they question the law. They preach the destruction of the temple. They tell people to eat what they want to eat, that nothing is unclean. They promise a life after death. <sighs> They say the Messiah is here and that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus was crucified. Yes, of course, my lord. Don't pander to me, priest. Now we have thousands following this carpenter from Nazareth. What have you priests done to let this happen? They are fanatics, a threat to Israel. The Lord of Moses is the Lord of Israel. Without the law, Israel is in chaos. Ah, speaking of the law, here it is. But not your ancient law of Moses, priest, no. The Tribune and General Gaius bring us the law of the Roman sword. Welcome, gentlemen. Rome demands peace. If you cannot control your people, the Empire will. Is that true, Tribune? Will Rome crush Judea if we allow these Jesus fanatics to continue? I would prefer diplomacy, King Herod. But there are many, like General Gaius here, who would welcome an excuse to exercise the swords of their men. He is a cruel man in charge of an army of cruel men. If there is a rebellion from these mad Jews, Rome will crush it and you along with it and me. word on the street. King Herod has ordered your death, you and John. God taught us that if we are to follow in his footsteps, we must sell everything and, and trust in him. You're going to need this now. We sold everything, our house, our farm. We want to follow Jesus. Are you sure? Uh, yes, we're sure. Hey, Carl. Why do you think they do it? Money, power? Uh, they believe it. Even worse. Have you heard them talk? Have you? Yes. When? Your mother took me. Don't ever speak of my mother again. Your mother thought they were saints. <laughs> Reuben! Are you insane? Look what's happening! Even she's defending these madmen! Wake up, Pharisee. Do you care about your God? Yes. Do you care about your country? Yes. Then act! 
Crush them now before the Romans crush us. Romans? The Romans are going to stand by and let a revolution begin. They'll destroy us, our temple, our way of life, everything. And, and they'll laugh while they do it. They just love to do it. Judea is the most troublesome province in the empire. They're just waiting for an excuse to destroy our religion. So, join with me. An oath, a solemn pact to destroy these lies once and for all time. We will exterminate them, every last oh, one but of no, them. no, Saul, don't do this. If you defend these blasphemers once more in my house, you will not be allowed to live here. Please, Saul. to destroy false teachings. Till Israel is safe. Listen, children of Israel, brothers and sisters, come, come, come. Gather together and listen to Stephen as he tells you the words of Jesus. Jesus, our master, said, love one another. As I have loved you, follow this example. I tell you he uses the name of Jesus. We have forbidden this. Arrest him. No. Wait. There is another way. If you do what I say, he can be your friend. Believe in what he says. He can save your lives. All of your lives. He loves you. Jesus said, I shall be your friend. Because all things... So you come to listen to these imposters, hmm? Good. You stay and learn. Bring me Saul of Tarsus and Gamaliel. They're in the second courtyard, and quickly. Who was Jesus? The Son of God. So was he man or God? Both. God sent to us in the form of man. God himself? Uh, divine? Yes. Ah, so you believe in two gods. <laughs> One God, the God of our forefathers. God the Father and God the Son. Ah, so Jesus was not God. God's Son. Divine? Yes. It's two gods. No. no. Jesus said, that he destroy the temple. Now, is that true? He meant the temple of his body. No, 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 no. Jesus said he'd tear down the temple, destroy our holy of holies, change the way we've lived for centuries. Jesus was a destroyer. No, Jesus is our savior. Jesus is our savior. The savior, the savior. Gamaliel, is that what the Pharisees teach? A man god? You know it's not. So, can your God be condemned by man and crucified by Romans? Of course not. God is alive. Jesus is alive. He is among us right now. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, here, come out. Show yourself. Huh? I want to see you. I will fall down on my knees and worship you if you show yourself, Jesus. Oh. Oh. Jesus! stand behind anything that this, this Jesus follower has said here today? He will not! Will Saul? Stay out of this. Saul will not! This man, he pretends to save you with a gift of some food and clever words, but his price is the betrayal of your Lord. Laws given to you by Abraham and Moses. Jesus taught us the law of love. This is not against Moses. 
Brothers, brothers, listen to me. I am a faithful Jew, true to our history and our customs, and so is this man, Stephen. Your God is his God. He teaches of at least two gods, the destruction of the temple and the resurrection having come and gone. Blasphemy! Take him away! Blasphemy! No! Take him away now. It is forbidden to speak of Jesus. It is forbidden to preach in Jesus' name. So, are you with me? So, if these teachings are not of God, they will die without violence. So, you saved my life. Go away or you'll be hurt. No, don't do this. In the name of God, don't do this. Don't do this. No. Ruben, don't do this. Did you don't learn do anything yet? Follow along and watch him die. No. Now he dies. The penalty for blasphemy is stoning. Barnabas! How long will brother turn against brother? No mercy, soul! Your God demands it! Do you approve of this? Yes! Jesus, and you will die! <laughs> Stephen! <laughs> Arrest this man! Stephen! Your oath is worthless! My duty. I love you, Dina. You love? Hear me. I love you, but you will have to make a choice. If you help me, I'll help you. I can tell you where the leader is. Where?
risen. You believe in the resurrection, don't you? The true resurrection. And what will you say to Stephen on Judgment Day? I only held their coats. You are corrupting Jerusalem. How? By preaching against the law of the Torah. I listen to Stephen, I listen to Peter. The law holds this country together. You didn't listen to Stephen or Peter. Your heart was closed. Doesn't matter, you're too late anyway. Meaning what? It's not just Jerusalem now, Saul. Peter and John have left. They're going to all the cities of Israel, spreading the words of Jesus to every Jew in the land. I thought you were a hero. You're a fool. Just a fool, doing Reuben's bidding. <laughs> Jesus taught us to turn the other cheek. Gamaliel is wrong. Jesus must be stopped. By any means necessary. My oath is good, Reuben. I love my country and my God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Yes. in the dust and spat and cursed. Well, this is me. <laughs> Dripping and dancing. <laughs> Not by some high priest or devilish deceit. <laughs> oh, oh. <sighs> uh, uh. John have returned. They're back. Praise God. John. What news? Good news. There are believers all through Judea and Samaria. Ah. Speaking out, unafraid. Glory to God. <laughs> Congregations oh. everywhere we went. John. Oh. As far as we can tell, the movement has stopped here in Jerusalem, King Herod. Well done. From what I've been told, these Jesus followers are terrified of you, Saul of Tarsus. Thank you, my king. But the threat is still alive. It has sprung up in other towns. Yes, Damascus in particular. Oh, what a pity. What do you suggest? Give me letters of introduction and designation of power to the synagogues of Damascus, and I will go there and, finding any members of the sect, bring them back, bound, to Jerusalem. Agreed. Give him an escort, our finest men. This is outrageous. 
But you, you go before the king and the high priest without first consulting me. Speed is of the essence. We must get there before anyone knows we're coming. Surprise is our best weapon. Surprise is your middle name lately, isn't it, Saul? I don't know what you're talking about. You filled the prisons. You're so proud of yourself, you're about to burst. I told you, once I know the goal, I never give up until it is seized. What you've done to these people is despicable. No one asked for your opinion. Keep quiet. Don't let your anger out on her. Don't tell me how to talk to my wife. Wife? When? If you speak again tonight, it will never happen. You're a vicious man, Reuben. You are an ambitious fool. I'm leaving in the morning. Good. I'll have your horse saddled next to mine. You're coming? Right by your side. Ah. I'm coming too. It's a military expedition. Perfect. I'll have an escort. I forbid it. Is this the way you let other men talk to your wife? He's not your husband, and I'm in charge here. How dare you talk to my wife like that? Have you both gone mad? This is Reuben, my house, Reuben. and I will not have you talk to her like that in my house. Get your hands off me. You upstart little Pharisee. Get your Stop hands it. off me. You watch your steps, Saul of Tarsus. I'm not without power in this country. Good. Then maybe you can get us some decent horses in the morning. Are you going? I have no choice. Then so am I. You are not going to Damascus. And when I return, we will be married. Peter and I have to warn the believers in Damascus. It's my fault, Peter. I'm the one who told Saul the word was spreading. The two of you can't go. They must be warned. Then I'll warn them. No, you cannot go. It's too dangerous. Peter and John are the two men Saul would most like to arrest, or even kill. Finding the two of you will make him very powerful. You cannot go! <sighs> I'm sorry, Peter. John. To speak to you like that. I apologize. You are speaking out of love, Barnabas. John and I know this, but we cannot let you take this risk. The head of the synagogue in Damascus is Ananias. A new believer. He knows us. He will trust our warning. No, no, you cannot go. That's all there is to it. I will go. I will find Ananias and I will warn him. Barnabas? Barnabas! demand much respect from your future wife, do you? You know nothing of my future wife, except that you desire her. If I wanted her, I would have her. You're a disgusting excuse of a man. Actually, I know more about her than you do. For instance, I know where she is right now. What are you talking about? She's right there. you not to follow us. Yes, you say many things, Reuben. You also said you were going to marry me. Go home at once. Alone? Across the wasteland? She got here alone. So now you wanted to risk it again. So, I want to know, are you going to marry her? <laughs> You two 
were destroying each other. Good friends make great enemies, don't they? <laughs> so why are you doing this? Reuben is a pompous fool. Not that. Chasing after these people because they believe differently than you. That's what God wants. How do you know? They're teaching lies. Their Messiah is dead. They're taking advantage of our countrymen. The law preserves Israel. It must be followed at all cost. People risk their lives by believing in Jesus. No one is being taken advantage of. It is a play for power by a sect who lost their leader. Now they don't want to lose their position. They're making up lies. They do miracles in his name. But that's a positive sign of false teaching. Only God can perform miracles. They say Jesus is God. There's only one God. What if you're wrong? <clears throat> There's blood on my hands. There's no going back.
It's been three days. He won't drink or eat. I'm afraid he's going to die. He's a weak man. He couldn't take the pressure. I must speak to you. I know you came to warn us Saul is our enemy, but now... What is it? What is it, Ananias? I had a vision. Vision? In my sleep, God spoke to me. God? He said I must find Saul and cure him of his blindness. God told you to go find Saul? Yes. God. God. It was God. Ananias. Ananias, in the first place, if you find Saul, he'll arrest you or kill you. Second, he isn't blind. Wish that he were. And third, you don't know where he is. On the street called Straight. At the house of Judah of Damascus, where he prays and waits for me to bring him back his sight. God told you where to find Saul? Ananias. Yes. You know this man? Yes. I had a vision. A man named Ananias came into this room. He laid his hands on me. And I could see again. Jesus sent him. Jesus? You have been chosen. Chosen? Saul! Saul! <laughs> God told me that you are the instrument he has chosen to bring his name before the Gentiles. Can you let me see again? The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. See. I can see. <laughs> I can see. So <laughs> It's as if, as if scales had fallen from my eyes. <laughs> Thank you. One more message. Tell me. God said, I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Suffer? For the sake of his name? God himself has called me. Ananias, the believers, they 
get sanctified with water. Baptized. Baptize me. I am not qualified. I'm so new to this belief. You just spoke directly to God. Who could be more qualified? Who? Baptize me. Come along. That's all. I don't think you'll need that inside. This is a perfect time. What shall I say? Just tell them your story. <laughs> will that be enough? I think it will be plenty. These people are all believers. Come. Brothers, I wish to introduce a a friend of mine, who has something he wants to say. My name is Saul of Tarsus. How dare you bring him here? The devil himself! The high priest of the temple in Jerusalem gave me the power to arrest all followers of Jesus who are in Damascus. Here are the orders. That was before Jesus appeared to me on the road coming here. Before I understood that he is the son of God before I believed that he is the Messiah, before I knew that he was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven, before I was baptized, before I became a follower of Jesus, I have no use for this now. The word of Jesus is my sword. The word of Jesus is my fire. Than a man who betrays his friends, his beliefs, his mission, his God. He was
was blind and then he could see. Speak to me of miracles. There is only one God and his name is not Jesus. I know what I saw. Don't you touch me. Where is he? I don't know. You tell me, or you will die tonight. I don't want to die. I don't know where he is. Then it won't matter if I kill you or not. It won't matter to me. Reuben, Reuben, he's in the synagogue. He's in the synagogue. He's in the... You're lying. You're just trying to save this filth. Reuben, I'm sorry. I've been confused. I'm sorry. I love you. How do you know where Saul is? He trusts me. I just left him there. Quiet, girl. Traitor! I love you, Rupert. Come with me! sacrifices his followers have to make. But Jesus is also so full of love. I think that is why. Why? Because I can feel Jesus' love, even in these times. We call that faith. Come. Come. Come, they'll be back. We have to find Saul. Find another way. Go, 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 go. Basket! Shh! Basket. What? Basket? Basket. Do you think you can hold me? God's help. With God's help. Get in. Get in, get in.
Lower. I wasted a whole month in Damascus searching for Saul. Every day I listen to you pleading for his safety. Now you will be quiet. Reuben Saul would not have come to Jerusalem. If he didn't die in the desert, he will be here in Jerusalem. And if he is here, I will find him and I will kill him. And none of your lies can save him. The temple! If he isn't there, we search the city. Okay, four, secure this gate. No one leaves till I say so. against God and country is here, Gamaliel. Your favorite student, Saul. I will find him, and I will kill him as God demands. Because his mind is open enough to investigate the teachings of another Pharisee? He teaches lies. Isn't that enough for you, Gamaliel? Reuben! I know you are doing this because of your belief in our God. I do as God commands. God commands the death of another? God has commanded the death of many of our people, Gamaliel. Any who will not obey his law. And are you convinced that God wants the followers of Jesus dead? He teaches Jews to ignore God's law. There is no greater threat to our belief or our country. Barnabas! I'm sorry, I have no money. Liar! You're a rich man. You grow wonderful melons and squash. I did once, but no longer. I gave it all to... 
A courageous man saved your life, and you repaid him with two tiny melons. So? 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 We thought you were dead. We watched the patrol run after you in the desert, and when you didn't come back... I thought I was dead. I walked for days, no water. Only God saved me. Come in. Mary will feed you, Saul. Paul. What? I'm not the man called Saul anymore. I don't want his name to scare believers again. I'm a new man with a new name, Paul. Good. It's the Roman name my father gave me along with my Jewish name, Saul. Paul of Tarsus. It means small. Hopefully it will frighten no one. <laughs> a new name will not make the difference. I know. I must meet Peter. I must convince him I'm sincere. If he will. They're afraid of you. Is he here? No, no, much too dangerous. Everyone knows this house. Robin has returned to Jerusalem. I know. If he finds you, he will kill you. I'll take you to Peter. Come. I must warn him first, but I'll take you to him. Come in. Rest. Eat. I'll come for you soon. watching to see if we're alone or followed. The arena? <laughs> Easy place for them to make sure it's not a trap. Come on. Come on. Barnabas. Peter. This is our most feared persecutor, Saul of Tarsus. But he wants to bury that man and give birth to a new man called Paul. He helped murder Stephen. James, he was very close to our Lord. He arrested dozens and stabbed Amos to death. That is all true. Ah, huh? you admit it. I ask God to forgive me. Why should we believe you? Jesus came to me, spoke to me. Don't use his name. It's true, James. Paul was on the road to Damascus to arrest believers. True. On the road, he was struck by a white light and heard the voice of Jesus. I asked who he was, and he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It's the truth. How do you know if it's the truth? I've heard him speak in the synagogue, talk of his love for Jesus, of, of his awakening. Talk, talk, talk. A trick to get to Peter and John. Perhaps. But if it was a trick, it worked. I am here. Peter. Jesus blinded me. For three days. Then I had a vision that a man named Ananias would come and bring my sight back. That very day it happened. I know that to be true. How? Because that very night, I baptized him. I don't want to endanger you. You don't ever have to see me again. All I want from you is your blessing and your permission. Permission? To speak the good news of Jesus. <laughs> fine, fine. Then they will kill you, just like you killed our people. Jesus told Ananias that I was chosen to be his instrument. To bring his name before Gentiles and before the people of Israel. You. I watched him grow up. I was by his side when he started. I watched him die. I watched him go into heaven. And he has chosen you to bring his name to Israel. I have spoken the truth to you. I give you my blessing, Paul of Tarsus. And I give you my permission to speak of the master. But I warn you, if there are lies in your heart, your soul will perish. You are speaking of God himself, the Messiah, the Christ, who will come again soon and establish his kingdom. The Romans will not save you, for they will be defeated. The priests will not save you, for they will be condemned if they have evil in their hearts. God's will be done. 
Yes, Barnabas. God's will be done. And it will be done, my friend. It will be done. So, my friends, I bring before you a man you never wanted to meet. A man who has persecuted the followers of Jesus, arrested us, even killed us. His name was Saul of Tarsus. Oh. Oh. Now, now he is called Paul. No, no, listen, listen to him. Do not fear. I believe in Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus spoke to me on the road to Damascus. He blinded me. He told me to stop persecuting him. When this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers, you descendants of Abraham's family and others who fear God, to us, the message of this salvation has been sent because the residents of Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize him or understand the words Soldiers. of the prophet. His coming fulfilled those by condemning Soldiers. him. Paul will speak to you again. Reuben, do you have any idea what the vows of Rome are like? They're glorious. Not like this sewer. Rome killed Jesus. Now you've allowed him to be reborn by your friend Saul. I do not want Rome to hear of this rebirth. Stop them now. <laughs> you must leave Jerusalem at once, Paul. Tonight. I'm not afraid of Reuben. It's not just Reuben. The Hellenists want you dead too. You're in danger from all sides. I didn't trust you, Paul, and I was wrong. You've shown your dedication to Jesus, but there's no need to tempt God. It is not cowardly to prevent your own unjust death. I have no problem being cowardly if it saves my life. You pretend to be weak, Barnabas, but you are a very strong and brave man. <laughs> Bring Reuben into the room and watch me run. <laughs> <laughs> I am leaving Jerusalem, Paul. It is time to spread the word. I'm going to Lydda. I'm sending Barnabas to Antioch. Only James will stay here to see to the believers in Jerusalem. So where do you want me to go? Tarsus. You want me to go home? The most difficult assignment of all. A prophet is seldom appreciated by his own people. Hmm? Even Jesus was not accepted by the people he grew up around. You must continue to teach the good news. In Tarsus? Without Barnabas at my side? Don't worry, Paul. Jesus told us the Romans will be defeated and that he would return soon. The end of the world is near. We must be found at his work when he returns. I love you, Reuben. And I love you.
Thank you, Ruben. For what? For marrying me. It's my pleasure. I hope. Later tonight. I know you hated me when I lied to you. Those days are forgotten. You're free to believe as you want. As long as it is as your priestly husband dictates. <laughs> Apologize for all the times I've treated you badly. Ruben. No, 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 it's true. I tried to saddle your spirit, and I never ever want to do that again. I may even have been wrong about Saul. Ruben. I want you to be free. Free to think as you want. Because I love you, Dina. Dina? Dina? Lord Jesus, you have called Paul to be your friend and disciple. Please, I pray to you with all my heart. Jesus, protect him and be with him in his mission. I beg you, Jesus. Forgive Ruben, because he does not know you. Open his heart, Jesus, so that he may accept your words and your love. Shine your light upon him, Lord Jesus, and show him the way he must follow. I also pray to you for Peter and the apostles. Please, Jesus, protect them and accompany them here on their way. Jesus, our Messiah. Please keep quiet. We must not be heard from the street. So. You baptized them, Peter? Yes, James, I did. Why? They are Gentiles. I told you, as I was speaking to them, the Holy Spirit fell on them. I was astounded. The Holy Spirit poured out even to the Gentiles. Jesus said, John, baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. God gave them the same gift that he gave us. Who was I? To reject God's voice. So I ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And I stayed with them, slept in their house, and ate what they ate. So, we are to baptize Gentiles and eat unclean animals with them? My vision said, nothing is unclean that God has cleansed. No, no, I will never do it! It's your choice, James. I heard the voice of God and he told me to put this prejudice away. Prejudice? Law, given by God to Moses. And now you want to replace it with the law as given to Peter? You think too much of yourself, Peter. I glorify God, not Peter. And God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. story about Jesus are you going to tell us today? Jesus walks on the water? <laughs> <laughs> I told you that story too many times. Let me tell you about his crucifixion. Sit down. Listen. For months now I've heard of war in the temple, Kreese. War, my lord? Jew plotting to kill Jew. Men waiting at the gates to kill other men. Jews in prison at your orders. Men fleeing Jerusalem to escape death. We have the situation under you control. You have nothing under control. You've allowed these Jesus followers to cause chaos in the city. I assure you, my lord, there is no chaos. And we have a plan. We must find the leaders and kill them publicly. A very good plan. Yes, that's what you keep telling me. But have you found them? Not yet, my lord, but we will. <laughs> How? Reuben has a way. Oh, do tell me. I have someone inside the sect, my king. A spy? Not exactly. <coughs> a 
Explain. Someone who will lead me to their leaders. But he doesn't know he's leading you to them, does he? No. Splendid. Who? Answer me. My wife. Your wife? Your new wife? My only wife. My, my. <laughs> I thought I was without love, but I pale in comparison to you, Ruby. The scourge of Jesus must be stopped. His followers ignore the law. They teach of everlasting life, never-ending life, and people believe them. Stopped, yes. At any cost? My wife will forgive me when she sees how wrong she was. It is a husband's duty to correct the errors of his wife. Well, well, yes. You bring me the leader, and I will kill him. So the Jews will be happy, I will be happy, and Rome will be happy. Only Reuben's wife will be unhappy, <laughs> but you can fix that. Can't you, Reuben? Ah! <laughs> Dina, I heard that Saul is teaching crowds about Jesus. Is that true? Why? Well, don't worry, I'm not going to arrest him. I don't care anymore. Well, the Sanhedrin doesn't care, and the high priest doesn't care, and the Jesus followers, they threaten no revolution, so they may live as they want. I only ask because if he is teaching, it must mean that the Jesus followers have accepted him into their sect. Apparently. Oh, this amazes me. See, if they can accept a man who arrested and killed them, then they will accept most men. I've been told they only care if you believe in the teachings of Jesus, nothing else. So they would accept even a priest who arrested and persecuted them? Reuben, are you telling me? Perhaps. Perhaps. Do you believe? I need instruction to know what I believe. I can tell you many things. No, my love, I don't mean to offend you. But I'm a priest, schooled in these things for many years. You're not qualified to answer my questions. I need the counsel of someone who is my equal. A leader in the movement. Someone who walked with Jesus. Yes. Yes. is guilty of blasphemy, sedition, treason, and other evil acts. The penalty is death. Reuben, you must stop this. I can do nothing against the power of the king and the high priest. Then I'll stop it. Dina, there is nothing to be done. I carry out this sentence in the name of Rome and in the name of God.
Reuben, did you like the dance? I am a priest. Oh, yes. Thou shalt not watch the lascivious exposure of human flesh. <laughs> Religion. I've called you here to compliment you on your exemplary work finding the Jesus follower. And you know what the most amazing part of that event was? The crowd. They loved it. They loved watching me kill that Jesus dog. Especially your friends, the priests. I was amazed. I've been getting compliments about it for days now. I've never been so popular in Jerusalem. So, my priest, I want to do it again. A politician's first rule is to please the people. Well, actually, that's not quite true here, is it? The first rule is to please Rome. And I want you to help me. You should be High Priest Reuben. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The High Priest is a fool. You are what I need in the Sanhedrin. And more importantly, you are what the Emperor needs. I'm going to recommend you to Rome. My God demands that those who break the laws given by God be punished. It's God's law, it's not Roman law. Anything else would be the destruction of my beliefs and my country. High priest is not my goal, justice is my goal. Justice? Well, yes. That's what we all want, and we will have it. As soon as you find me, Peter. Peter? Simon, called Peter. That's what my spies tell me is the name of the number one leader. I want him. Bring him to me. You can do that, can't you? For justice. Reuben. High priest. <laughs> with the execution of James, son of Zebedee. And now, I bring you the leader of Jesus' followers. May he be the last. I give you Simon called Peter. <laughs> Reuben, my high priest. Will you execute him now, my king? No, 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 no. He's too valuable. That's the mistake I made last time. I had only one showing with that James. I want more. I'll keep this Peter in prison and bring him out any time I need the crowd behind me. March him through the crowd and then throw him into a cell. My king. Under heavy guard, Reuben. Heavy. Lose this one and you won't be priest of anything. Victorious. I led them to him. To James, to Peter, 
I let them. Reuben pretended to love me just so I would lead him to them. And you have to pray for him and for Peter. God would never hear my prayer. Jesus taught us a prayer. Do you want to learn it? Yes. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Paul! Oh, Barnabas! Look at you, working like a slave! <laughs> I pay my own way, Barnabas. This is important work, Paul. But God needs you. Paul, I believe God needs you. So do I. So? God told Ananias, I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. I'm frightened. <laughs> You're frightened. And I'm envious. Envious? God has called you, Paul. And perhaps the road will be hard. But it's God's road. We will spread the word together. has escaped from prison. I'm not responsible for his escape. Of course not. I had men sleeping on either side of him. Of course. They must have been bribed. Of course. There were men at the doors. Of course. I will find him again. How? Your wife didn't look very happy with you. And I'm not very happy with you. Even the high priest is not very happy with you. So you have told our king that you will be a better high priest and calling me a fool. You have ten days. Ten days? To live if you can't find him. This Simon Peter. Open the gate. It is your king who speaks. Go away, you filth. Who was guarding Peter? And who was outside the cell? Draw your swords. Kill him? If you don't kill him, I will have him kill you.
Cyprus, Paul! Cyprus! Salamis is on the northeast shore. <laughs> Love the sea too much for a tent maker. It's my road to God's will. God's will? God wants me to tell the Gentiles about this. Yes, Paul. We must be careful. They have their own God. No. We must never be careful, Barnabas. We must rush in like bulls. We must crash through their pagan gods like this boat through the sea. Paul. We will tell the world about Jesus all the way to Rome. Rome? Why are you washing clothes with the slaves? To punish myself for your crimes. I had to do it. Get away from me. They want to destroy the law. They want to destroy our way of no, life. No, you did that. I love you. <laughs> Jesus taught forgiveness. Don't speak to me of Jesus. You are my wife! I am a widow. If I don't bring them, Peter, I will be killed! For me, you are dead already. citizen who betrayed Rome. You are alive only because King Herod is dead. Find Peter, kill him, and I'll let you live. I can. I thought you'd say that. You will kill Saul, or they will kill you. We are fools for the sake of Christ. We are hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clothed and beaten. We are homeless, and we grow weary from the work of our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. As you all know, I try and tell the truth at all times. Even when I know it is not a truth, that everyone wants to hear. Tonight, we are all happy that Peter has been here with us in Antioch for the past month. And we are glad that Benjamin and others have brought good tidings from James in Jerusalem. But, but, some of us are engaging in a hypocrisy since Benjamin arrived. Some of us used to eat with the Gentiles in this group. And as soon as Benjamin arrived, they shunned the Gentiles. This is hypocrisy. Who are you speaking of, Paul? You. And Peter. I'm sorry, Peter, but it's true. As soon as James' people arrive from Jerusalem, you pull back from the Gentiles. You are afraid of criticism because of the controversy over those who are circumcised and those who are not. It's a very serious question. To some, perhaps. To me, it is a mockery of Jesus' teaching. It is the law that believers must be circumcised believers in the law. You're abandoning the law? 
When Gentiles, who do not possess the law, do instinctively what the law requires, they are the law unto themselves. What the law requires is written on their hearts. Many who follow Jesus believe that they must accept the law also. Christ is the end of the law. The end of the law, so there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. This is too serious a question to decide here tonight. There should be a meeting of all the elders to decide this question. Barnabas is right. We will meet in Jerusalem in one month's time. This is very dangerous. This is my temple. I will come here whenever I want. You're a stubborn man, Paul. I'm not afraid. I am. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. But we're not talking about Jews, we're talking about Gentiles. The law does not bend Gentile or Jew. Moses is very clear. We've always said that we follow the law. Moses' law. Barnabas and I have found many wonderful things in our travels. Jesus, who's called Christ in the lands to the west. And the believers are called Christians. <laughs> Christians. Oh, we like this word. I think Jesus would like this. You are all Christians. <laughs> the law, as Moses gave it to us, is not known among Gentiles. When we tell them about the law, we're always careful to explain it as a way of living which is good for all not as rules which must be followed. Gentiles have their own rules, and Barnabas and I have found that many are the same as ours. Different words meaning the same thing. Yes. God's commandment to do unto others as you would have them do unto you is the law by which all men must live. It does not matter if they are Jew or Gentile. But specific laws like circumcision are very difficult for Gentiles to accept. Demanding the Gentiles eat certain foods or wear certain clothes is not important, in my opinion. It's only important that they understand and accept Jesus and the teaching of Jesus. But didn't Jesus teach the law? He did. But you have told me that he said loving one another was the heart of the law and that we are to be more concerned about what comes out of our mouths than what goes in. My brothers, Paul's argument has changed my mind. No, Peter. Peter! God knows the human heart, and in cleansing the hearts of Gentiles, he has made no distinction. Therefore, putting God to the test by placing on the neck of disbelievers a yoke which is not theirs but ours is not right. They will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as we will. Will you join with me in this, James? It is important we be united in this decision. We should make a solemn proclamation which says that we have decided unanimously to no longer impose on Gentiles any burden of the law, except, except to obey the commandments of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. Amen. 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 So he was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven.
we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Savior. To the God Zeus, Goddess Athena, to the unknown God, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I walk through the city and look carefully at the objects of worship, I find among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. But noble men, the God who made this world does not live in shrines made by human hands as though he needed anything from us. He himself gives to all mortals life and breath. We ought not to think of God as an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. God overlooks the times of human ignorance. But now, as man gains knowledge, God commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged by a man whom he has appointed and who raised himself from the dead. Raised himself from the dead? And ascended into heaven where he waits for the day to come when we will all be judged for our belief in him. Jesus of Nazareth. Told me about Jesus. You say he raised himself from the dead? Yes. the owner? I'm Aquila. I'm Paul of Tarsus. Tarsus? I'm a tent maker. My father has pits just like this. I felt I was home when I smelled them from over the hill. Oh. Which is why we're outside of Corinth. City fathers don't think it's home when they smell these pits. <laughs> Would you like some water? Let's go a new friend some. This is Paul of Tarsus. He's a tent maker too. This is my wife, Priscilla. When I was a boy, I worked with my father till he sent me away to school in Jerusalem. Jerusalem? Do you know a prophet called Jesus? I travel the world telling people of him. We are Christians. I am home. Jesus spoke of love. Tell us what he meant, Paul. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious, not boastful or arrogant, or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. It rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. That is beautiful, Paul. Paul, you must stay in Corinth. We're new believers from Rome. We need a leader. Rome is where I'm going. I must go back to Jerusalem first and then to Rome. You can't go to Rome. No Jews allowed. What? Claudius drove us out. All Jews from Rome. That's why we're here. No Jews. You can't go to Rome, Paul. I'm on my way to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there. 
except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecution are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry I receive from Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. Remember, if I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. against Moses' law. Rumors. I don't deny the importance of the law, James. We had to live by it until Christ came. But we are no longer subject to it. The only thing that counts now is faith, working through love. This is very difficult for Jews. They grew up under the law, Paul. Yes, I know. Tomorrow. Today. <laughs> Today we have men who are under a vow of purification for seven days. I think you should join these men. Go through the rites with them. Pray. Cut your hair. Then everyone will know that it was true what they've been told about you. That you too observe and guard the law. Cut my hair? <laughs> A small sacrifice for a man who has been beaten for his God. James, I only came home to rest. Soon I will begin my longest journey. But I agree with you. It is important for the people to know that I follow the law. Where will you go? Rome. To the end of the earth. Israelites, this is the man who is turning the world against our people, our laws, this place. He has defiled this holy place. Ugh. No! punishing this man. He breaks God's law. He breaks no law. If he breaks the law, he shall be dealt with under the law. You have no right to murder him as you wish. This is a matter for Jews. Jews are Roman subjects, and in this land, I am Rome. Bring him. General. General. You shall follow my order immediately. Pick him up. What am I to do with you, Jew? Kill him. 
Why? He's a threat to Rome. <laughs> One man? He leads a religious sect that follows Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified. They teach that he rose from the dead. I don't care if they teach that he turned into a swan. They teach revolution against Rome. Is that true, Jew? Do you want a revolution against Rome? <coughs> He's harmless. Kill him. I decide what is done here, Gaius, not you. This man will not be killed. There is no reason. He must be flogged for inciting a riot. Yes, fine. Flog him. I am a Roman citizen. <coughs> what did you say? Born a Roman citizen. <coughs> a Roman citizen? Do you still want him killed, you fool? Bring him inside. So I bring him before your council. People want him killed, which I cannot allow because he's a Roman citizen since birth, a Jew. Yes, but also a Roman. You will decide the proper punishment, if any, for this man. Yes. Brothers, since the day I met Jesus, I have lived my life with a clear conscience. Blasphemy! Strike him in the mouth! Yeah. Uh. <laughs> God will strike you! Are you standing there to judge me according to the law? And yet in violation of the law, you ought to be struck! So. This is the head priest you speak to. If you follow the law, you know what is demanded. The law says you shall not speak evil of a leader of your people. And so I apologize. Brothers, I am a Pharisee. I follow the law as you do. I'm on trial here, not because of the law, but because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. God has spoken to me. This is blasphemy. Quiet. Quiet. We find nothing wrong in this man. He follows the law. This man spits on the law of Moses. He teaches love. God teaches law. He teaches hope. God teaches obedience. This man, this man must die. If we cannot do it, 
within the law, then we must do it without the law. Brothers, there's sometimes a moment when the law cannot act, but when God would bless us for our courage. David knew this. Solomon knew this. They had the courage to act, and so must we. I will not eat or drink again until Saul of Tarsus is dead. Are you with me? I didn't have to make a meal for my stupid master this morning. Why not? He has taken an oath. He says he won't eat or drink again until that old Paul is dead. <laughs> I hope he lives forever. <laughs> Immediately, by my orders. Here. Well, what do you want, girl? Paul is to be killed. Jews. Oh, <laughs> it is a secret pact. When you bring him to the council tomorrow, they will ambush you and kill Paul. How do you know this? Women learn things. Good. I will send Paul to Caesarea tonight. Go on your way and tell no one of this. And, uh... Thank you. Romans. As a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of them is love. Paul, some news. The king is dead. That isn't news. And the new king comes to visit. Agrippa? In one week. I must get him to hear my case. who are to be heard, come forward. Your names? Paul of Tarsus. I am Ananias, high priest of Jerusalem. And the charge, high priest? This man Saul is an agitator amongst the Jews throughout the world, not just Israel, but the whole empire. 
He's also a ringleader of the indecent sect based around the fraudulent Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. He has defiled the temple, refused the law of Moses, incited riots against Rome, and defamed the name of Agrippa himself, and... Love never ends, and Jesus lives, my king. Why is it so difficult to believe that the Messiah has come? He spoke to me. He told me to take his truth into all the world. I have followed his orders, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place. That the Messiah must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and the Gentiles. You're out of your mind, Paul of Tarsus. Too much learning has driven you insane. I'm speaking the truth. Do you believe the prophets, my king? <laughs> are, you, are you going to persuade me to be a Christian now, Paul? <laughs> Not only you, but all who are listening to me. And what other accusations are there against this man? I have in no way committed any offense against the temple, against the law of the Jews, against the king, or against the Emperor. High Priest, this man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. I appeal to the Emperor's Tribunal to seek my release. My King. You've made a mistake, Prophet. I would have set you free today had you not appealed to the Emperor. But you did not trust my judgment. So now you will be required to go before the Emperor in Rome. <laughs> Very long journey for a man who should be free. May your God be with you. You will never return from Rome to preach your false message. Rome. Reuben, you have destroyed a man because of your ambition. You know nothing of my mind, Gamaliel. Your love for Saul has blinded you. My love for God tells me that he has many ways of showing us his mind. I believe in life after death, Reuben. I believe God knows our hearts, and I believe we will stand before him on that day and answer for our life. I choose to serve him now, not in some fantasy of life after death. Jesus was not the Messiah. I don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. But what I know for sure is that you're wrong. You don't have the true faith of Israel. will see that I failed to silence him. I told you to kill him.
my god. You are with me. Even unto the end of the earth. It is written, those who have never been told of him shall see, and those who have never heard of him shall understand. Thank you.